Welcome back to a half hour of power. It's good to be back. Um, this last week was a little bit under the weather, but thank God. I appreciate all your prayers and your thoughts. It's so good to be back. And I just, it's so good to just be a part with you guys. And I just want you to take some time to just get your mind on the Lord. I know that it's been a rough 2020 and going into 2021. And a lot of people's minds are going in a lot of different directions. And a lot of people have not been able to attend church. And that's one reason why we started this, so that we can worship and praise the Lord with you and hopefully encourage you and you encourage us and just be there for one another. Because that's our job, to be there for one another. So just take a few moments and worship the Lord with us tonight. And we pray that this is a blessing to you. I go 
praise him this evening. Give him glory, God. Give him Well, I don't know about you, but I know here in my home, I can feel that. Let your glory fill this place. You know, in the day and age we live in, that's what we need. We need God to saturate everywhere that we are. And as she was praying there, I was listening to some of the words that she was praying as I was playing and she was talking about, Lord, I agree with all the parents out there that have lost children and, and lost loved ones and that they would receive Christ. And that right there is a testimony of love. And that's what we've been talking about all this month of February was love and different stories. We started out with the, the prodigal son. We started out where Abraham had to take Isaac and sacrifice him up. Then we went from that to Moses' mother putting him in a basket to save the people of God. And today I want to end this section for now on love to talk to you about the greatest love that there has ever been. It's a love that's not from this earth. It's a love that's deeper than anything you will ever experience. It's a love that will challenge you. It's a love that will drive you. It's a love that will protect you. It's a love that will walk beside you. And if we would go to the scriptures, what come to mind to me today was this one, very simple. And we've preached about it for years. And we've talked about it, but John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that who should ever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's love, folks. To know that God gave up his Son. So his Son could come down here. But his Son said, Dad, let me. Let me go. I'll go. There was nobody in the earth that was worthy and pure enough to make that sacrifice. There was nobody in heaven. The angels couldn't do it. But Jesus could. He said, I'll go. He said, I'll become a living sacrifice. And I thought about that today. What love. To leave the riches and the splendor of heaven. And to leave his father. And to come to earth. And begin as a poor boy born in a manger. To begin his life as a carpenter's son on this planet. And we know how he was conceived and what was taking place and, and how that was to come about. And I could go into another area with that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to today because I want to stick to the program. He told his father, he said, I'll go. He said, I'll die for their creation. I'll die for their sins. I'll die for their wrongdoings. I'll pay the price. Why? Because he loved us enough. But it wasn't enough that he just went to Calvary's. I mean, well, that's the worst thing he went through. Let me tell you something, folks. It wasn't easy going through all that he went through to make it to Calvary. It wasn't easy being talked about and ridiculed and spit on. It wasn't easy to be taken to Pilate's Hall and accused of things that he had not done. It wasn't easy to go through the beatings that he went through and the shame that he took. It wasn't easy to know that the very people he came to save and deliver were doing this to him. It wasn't easy to have a spear in his side and thorns on his head. It wasn't easy to have his back whipped until it was shredded, just like raw hamburger, and bleeding and, and the pain. 
But he knew all of this. And he still said, I'll go. I'll go. If it's just one, I'll go. If it had just been you that I'm talking to, he still would have done all of that. Now you tell me, is that love? I'm pretty sure it is. But he went through all of this. And even before he went through the beatings and all of this stuff, they tried to attack him. And when the soldiers come to get him, one of them's ear got cut off. And they were going to kill him. But Jesus said, no. And he put his ear back on. The very person that was sent there to arrest him. That's love. Judas betrayed him. Think about it. All the people. Remember the scripture we're talking about? If you love me, feed my sheep. Folks, he showed us the greatest love that could ever be shown. And he knew where it was coming from and what he was going to have to do. But when he was taken to Calvary, as he was barely making it through the streets of the city with the cross on his back, and they were lashing at him with the whip and making fun of him, As he dropped beneath the cross, I'm sure more than once, but the Bible tells us once for sure. And somebody said, I'll carry the cross. I'll carry it for him. Would that be you today? Christian, I'm talking to you for a second now. Are you willing to pick up the cross that the master has dropped below? Are you willing to carry the cross that he has given you to see the miracles of God take place? And when they went up Golgotha's Hill, you know the story. And it came time to nail him down. I don't know in the scriptures anywhere where it says he fought them. I don't know where anywhere in the scriptures it says he tried to run away. He didn't even offer a defense for what he was accused of. As he stood there waiting for the cross to be prepared. I'm sure he thought, as a human, I could get out of this. Satan even told him, call the angels and call them and come and get you. You won't have to go through this. Think about it, folks. He could have made an escape. He could have left. He could have ran. But he stood there watching them prepare to crucify him. I'm not trying to be sad. I'm trying to talk to you about love. He showed the world and even those that were doing what they were doing to him that he loved them because he didn't run. And when it came time to be nailed, I don't believe he fought or turned or gave him any hassle. I believe that he laid his life down willingly because he said he did. And I'm sure as they put the nails into his hands and his feet, it was gut-wrenching pain. But he said, "This is I'm doing this for my children. I'm making a way for them. I'm making restitution. Each slap of that hammer took away some sin. Each slap of that hammer took away guilt, persecution, lies. And each slap of that hammer showed the world and those around him that he loved them in spite of and was willing to go the ultimate distance and willing to pay the ultimate price for someone he loved. Folks, that's love. That's love. But it didn't stop there. After they crucified him, 
They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Not his own. He wasn't even good enough in their eyes to have his own tomb. They borrowed one. But the Bible tells us that in three days he rose. And he made a journey to hell's door and told Satan, he says, I've come for what rightfully mine. I've come for what I paid for. I come for what I died for. I come for the freedom of my people. I come for the miracles of my people. And he told him, he said, give me the keys to death, hell, and the grave. That was love. He paid an ultimate price. Just so you and I could live in our homes, drive our cars, wear the clothes that we have, eat the food that we have. He did it because he loved us. He showed us the true meaning of love. February is the love month because of Valentine's Day, and I think it's kind of interesting to think that Valentine's Day is honored by the heart. <laughs> Jesus gave his heart for us. He gave his life. I don't know who I'm talking to or who's watching today. But before this program's off, I hope you'll find a place and kneel down and talk to God and renew your relationship with Him if it's gotten slow and lagging. And if you've never had a relationship with Him, it's simple. It don't take a big long prayer. It doesn't take fancy words. Just find you a place. And if you can't find a place to kneel, stand where you are and say, Jesus, because you paid a price for me, I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart today. Please come and live with me. I commit my life to you, Lord, and everything that I do. And I will do my best, Lord, to follow your word and you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. It's that simple. It's churches have made receiving Christ as their Lord and Savior a hardship. They made it almost impossible. People think, I can't be saved because I've committed too much sin or I've done too many wrongs or I'm too far gone or I'm from the wrong side of the tracks. And a big one, he won't hear me when I cry out to him. The Bible says he hears your cry from the wilderness. How does he do that? Love. And when you ask him into your heart, he'll come and live with you and live in you. And you'll reside in the kingdom of God. You become a resident of God's house. We talked about that earlier in the month. When you decide to serve God and He just moves into your home and your body and your mind and your spirit and your soul and loves you, you become a resident of the King's house because of love. Because of love, He died for you. And because of this love, He's going to come back for us. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But because of love, a father accepted his prodigal son back home. Because of his love, Abraham did not have to sacrifice Isaac. Because of his love, Moses' mom was able to raise him and be near him and watch God used him to deliver the children of Israel out of Pharaoh's hands. And because of love, you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Walk in favor. Folks, there is what's considered the permissible will of God. And there's the perfect will. 
When you walk in his will, you ask, the word says, you ask what you will and it shall be done. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. That's love. And if by chance, while you're serving God, you falter and make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of your relationship with God. All you have to do is turn around and say, Jesus, forgive me. I slipped. I made a mistake. And God loves you enough to forgive you. Love is forgiveness. Love is hope. Love is peace. Love is joy. Love is contentment. Love is something that's shared between family members. Love should be something that is shared between churches, between ministries. In this day and age, the world doesn't need more arguments. The world doesn't need more deceptions. The world's got enough of that. The world does not need the church of God fighting amongst itself. What they need to see is the love of Christ bringing the church of God together. Whether it be white, black, blue, green, Chinese, no matter what, if it's a church that obeys and believes God and trusts God, He wants to bring it back. Now is the time for us to come back together and not fight, not argue, not put down, not criticize. Not turn on, but a time to uplift, strengthen, carry if needed, help heal, bandage up the wounded, hold the hurting, shelter the crying, show love even to those that may not be showing love to you. Christ did that with the beatings and the three nails. And I'm telling you something, folks. And because of his love. Now, somebody says, well, you've been, this is kind of making me want to cry. If it's touched your heart, good. If it's made you want to think, good. If it's made you want to pray, good. If you're mad at me because I'm telling you the truth, good. But let me share something with you that I'm sure you already know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. That because of his love, very shortly by the signs and the times that we're seeing today, very shortly, there's going to trumpet going to sound. <laughs> and our love that the Lord has for us is going to cause him to split the eastern sky. And it's not going to be a quiet situation because he's coming back just like he did three days after being in the ground. He said, I've come for what's mine. When that trumpet sounds, He's going to split the eastern sky. And he's coming for what's his. World has had us long enough. Sin has had us long enough. Heartache has had us long enough. He's coming for what's his. For what he paid for. For who he died for. And folks, <laughs> the Bible tells us the dead in Christ shall rise first. I think that's a little partial, but oh well. But those of us that are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him. And we shall live with him in glory forevermore. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more heartache. No more struggles. No more sickness. No more death. But we will be living over in glory land. Shielded and protected by the power and the presence of God. And surrounded by the world's greatest love. The love of a creator. The love of someone that knows what you're going through. I can't wait for that trumpet to sound. And I want all my family to go with me. And I want you to go with me. Let me talk to you for just i got about three minutes left. Let me talk to you for just a minute. I want you to go with me. Whether you go by the way of the river, by the rapture, it doesn't matter. I want you to go with me. I don't want you just to have read about that heavenly city. Read about the streets of gold. Read about the gates of pearl and the walls of jasper. Read about the mansions that he's prepared. I don't want you just to 
Read about it. I want you to experience it for yourself. I want you to experience what God's love can do for you and has done for you. It's February. And this is the last Tuesday of this month. And I couldn't think of a better way to end this month but talking about the greatest love. And it's the greatest love story this world has ever known. One person, one being gave up everything to save us. To love us. He loves you. There's a song that we sing sometimes. Called, he loves me. When I was bad, he loves me. When I was sad, he loves me. Folks, it's the greatest love you'll ever experience. Join me. By the way, the graver by the rapture, however it takes place, join me. Let's take that trip. Good old song, good old gospel ship. Let's take that trip together. Let's make heaven our home. Let's experience the splendor of the greatest love. Hallmark can't make a movie good enough to talk about God's love. Folks, God loves you. He gave His Son. And His Son did what He did willingly. As we get ready to go off here shortly, I just want to tell you, and I want to pray, that God loves you. Father, if there's someone watching today, God, that don't know you, and they need to experience your love, I ask you, God, to let the convicting power of God touch them and draw them so they can experience the greatest love that's ever been told. Father, if there's a church member that's going through it, or a ministry that's going through it, God, let them experience your love one more time. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory for what you've done and what you're going to do and how you're going to take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. I hope that this month has been a blessing to you. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope you enjoyed my wife singing. She blesses me every time she sings, and I just I love to hear her. But this has been Reverend James Jones and our power. God bless you.